What's going on today, YouTube? Today we're going over Fish Speech's latest model, which adds controllability to sentences. So you can add things like tags for laughter, pause, stuff like that, which allows you to control sentences better for text to speech. So I should say up front, this is a sponsored video, and I'll be going over how you can use Fish Speech. Um, so yeah, let's just go over some samples real quick. I have the homepage here, but um, I've got three sentences that we're going to listen to first. So let's just play that through. You call that an ambush? <laughs> I've seen pigeons with better strategy. I told you not to touch that. Well, too late now. Victory isn't won with strength alone. <laughs> but it does help. So as you can see, we've got these little blue tags in here that allow me to kind of add where um, I want different uh, nonverbal parts of speech. And there are a little bit of quirks that I'm going to go over as well with their current models. But before that, how can you get started with this? Well, they do allow you to do some free generation. So they have a free tier for trial. If not, you would need to go into their premium once you um, use all of the free tier. And their premium plan seems to be pretty good because you can use unlimited generations in the web and uh, allows you to do voice cloning and stuff like that. So I have some models or I have a voice that I'm going to clone on screen here and uh, we'll go through that. But yeah, you can just sign up with Google. So you just um, you just go into their login area and then I have mine sign up with Google. So it makes the integration a little bit easy. Now, once you're on there, you can go into kind of like the discovery page where you can find uh, voices that you can use. Um, but for me, what I wanted to do was uh, clone some voices. So uh, this is where you would go to build a new voice. And for building any new voice, you want to make sure that the audio samples you're using um, have their background removed, um, isolated, and that it's mainly just that single speaker that is speaking. So don't use things like um, YouTube videos, try to do things maybe like podcasts or um, scraped audio from whatever content you want to use and then you can clone that voice. We're going to be using a voice um, right here, which is from Monster Hunter Wilds. And uh, just going to upload some samples here to get a reference. And then um, I'll put it into private. So private, enter a voice name, um, Monster Hunter P2M. And then we can then go and create this. And it's going to upload the samples and then uh, what it'll do is it'll use these samples to generate its own reference audio. And I think that might be there to uh, help them with copyright things so that they're not storing these on their web. So this is the next page. And we've got this default sample that we are going to need to use for kind of like the reference speech. But so let's just take a quick listen to this sample. I believe we may have found something significant in these readings, probably. The pattern suggests some form of environmental adaptation, though we'll need more data to confirm. It seems the local fauna has been responding unusually to these changes. Okay, so that sounds relatively good to me. So if I didn't like that, I would just regenerate the sample here, or I can even add audio samples and start to create more of those. But uh, with that, we can now save and I can now use it. So you can use it for single generation if you want to do that, or you can build kind of like an audiobook slash um, project. But we'll go over just single usage. So you would just go to my voice cloning library or my voice library, use voice. And then in here, you'll be able to um, do your TTS. So we are going to be using the S1 model. This is the latest one that is released. Um, and this is the one that allows you to add kind of like these nonverbal tags into it. So as you can see up here, um, you've got uh, like break, long break, breath, laugh to control speech. And we can add the, let's say, long pause here. And I don't recommend that you do this type of controllability in this area. I recommend that you go to the projects area, which I'll show in a little bit, because it's a lot easier to do that there and allows you to iterate much faster. So I'll go ahead and create and then let's take a listen. I believe we may have found something significant in these readings, probably. The pattern suggests some form of environmental adaptation, though we'll need more data to confirm. It seems the local fauna has been responding unusually to these changes. So you could hear kind of that long pause in that beginning area there. Um, and then 
you can continue to generate here or regenerate. Um, if you have the premium plan here, you can do as many times as you want on the web interface. So to make things a little bit easier, what um, they recommend that you do is go into the text-to-speech area and then create an advanced audio story um, where if you go into here, you can create a new story. Let's go, let's test two and then create a new model. You can add whatever model in here. Uh, we're going to use the one that we just uploaded. Um, and then for the back end, I'm going to use S1 and then create. So that's going to give me a kind of um, a page or I guess, yeah, kind of like a page where I can make chapters. Um, here on the left hand side, you can add new chapters, um, stuff like that. And then you can start to just run through here and, and, uh, make whatever TTS you want. So you can make this a audiobook. Um, you can use it for individual sentences for text to speech. Um, I'm going to go to the tests that I already have here. And um, you can see that I've got a bunch of individual sentences in this area that uh, I can generate with. Let me go ahead and change this voice out for the one we just cloned. So what I would do is go to this voice area, click that, um, that kind of the circular arrows, refresh arrows, go to select the voice that we just made. And then I can just um, go to generate and it'll generate the audio. The scent of rain. It's been a while. Let me, uh, let me go back. So there we go. That is the speaker that we generated. And yeah, I have a project here that um, I was just playing around with that we can take a listen to um, as well. This is kind of like a multi-speaker audiobook, quote unquote. So just to give you more of an example on how it sounds, we'll just go ahead and take a listen to this little section that I built and... Uh... His first friendly interaction in this world. About 30 minutes after he offered to help her in that heartwarming exchange. Um, what exactly is this? Their investigation had led nowhere. The girl's eyes were cold as she asked this. Her dissatisfied gaze directed at Subaru, who had just discovered something. That cold gaze is actually kind of exciting. Wait, no, it can't be. I, I, was an M all along. <laughs> I don't know about this M or whatever, but it's clear to me that you're talking complete nonsense. Making no effort to hide her exasperation, she crossed her arms and sighed. Okay, so I don't know about you guys, but I find this being pretty cool that uh, we've got an interface here where we can alternate speakers. This is like exactly what I've been working on with my audiobook maker. Um, and it's it's really nice that you're able to uh, do that. So you could technically generate an entire audiobook here, um, adding these pauses and all of these different things as you see fit. Um, and pretty much just let your creativity flow with something like this. And then another thing about S1 is that it's multilingual. Um, so it's got uh, these eight languages right here. Um, and uh, I'm going to show you Japanese because that's the only other language that I'm familiar with. And um, show you kind of uh, some, some little quirks with that as well. So uh, let me go ahead and copy this sentence here. And I'm going to use a Japanese um, voice for this section. And so if I go into this voices here, um, I have this uh, Subaru voice and you can hear kind of how it's going to read English out in a Japanese accent, which I thought was kind of fun. Um, so put beta, generate, and we'll take a listen. His first friendly interaction in this world, about 30 minutes after he offered to help her in that heartwarming exchange. So. There you go. It kind of has a little bit of an accent in there because this is a Japanese voice. And then we can also switch this to a uh, female uh, Japanese voice as well and regenerate. His first friendly interaction in this world, about 30 minutes after he offered to help her in that heartwarming exchange. So there you go. That one seemed to kind of have a little bit of a uh, little bit less of a of an accent, but um, that is how it would sound with English. And then if I just pull open some Japanese text and place this in here instead, um, it can also read Japanese. So that's very cool. Which it sounds way more accurate with Japanese um, than it does English. Uh, that sounded pretty good. And then um, so yeah, you could try this out with the languages that are uh, provided um, that they allow, which is very neat. And um, that's one advantage that uh, S1 has over some of the other models out there. So I wonder if laughter, how laughter would work. Um, let's listen. 
チベタの感触を顔面に味わい<笑>彼は自分がうつ伏せに倒れたのだと気づいた Okay, so that one didn't really do laughter、uh, entirely. And so I guess that'll go into kind of、uh, some of the quirks that I'm going to talk about with S1、um, that、uh, I think need some areas of improvement are some of these tags.、Uh, the tags work, they work, but sometimes you need to add multiple instances of the tag and or、uh, surround kind of like a,、uh, a transcription of the nonverbal.、Um, Word、uh, with like the tags, for example, like laughter. So here I have、uh, laughter surrounded,、um, surrounding this haha to kind of induce laughter. So this is how this one sounded. You call that an ambush? Haha, <sighs> I've seen pigeons with better strategy. But for example, if I remove it it's, and just use the one tag, it may not generate the laughter. You call that an ambush? <laughs> I've seen pigeons with better strategy. So, there it kind of generated partially bi-、uh, a partial bit of the laughter. I think they're maybe、uh, masking out those tokens, those laughter tokens in here. So, that's why adding a few more of these might help with the generation. Let's take a listen to this. You call that an ambush? <laughs> I've seen pigeons with better strategy. And in the case that adding multiple doesn't work, that is where you can add kind of like a haha in here. You call that an ambush? <laughs> I've seen pigeons with better strategy. So there you go.、Um, that's、uh, one little quirk with laughter. Some of the tags work better than others as well. Laughter seems to be pretty consistent. Long pause is very good. Really like long pause. Pause works well. Breath, cough, lip smacking.、Um, those ones、uh, I think are a little bit harder to induce with the current model.、Um, and then sighing.、Um, sighing does work、uh, as well, but. I found that you needed to add like a few of these、uh, side tags in order for it to, to get going. So, yeah, some of these quirks still probably need to be ironed out, but、um, with AI, everything is always improving. And so,、uh, this might be an issue today, but next week or the week following, it could be resolved、um, with a better model that was,、uh, that was trained. So, so, those are the only issues that I ran into with Fish Audio. In terms of audio quality and audio cloning, it's very accurate. <laughs> the, the audio cloning on here is,、um, well, I mean, The, creator, the creators behind this also worked on GPT Sovitz, so I can expect it. And it's also、um, cheaper than 11 Labs, so I think the quality is about 11 Labs, but a little bit cheaper. But,、um, but yeah, that's going to be it for today's video. I really hope that more models with controllability come out so that、uh, the output is a little bit、um, easier to control for things where you need to. And、um, yeah, that's going to be it for today's video. Once again, I'd like to thank all the members of the channel for supporting me. Very much appreciate it, and I will see you guys later.